Hey, how's it going? It's Joe. I wanted to do um, some videos on uh, sound design techniques using the ER301. And today I wanted to talk about oscillator sync, or more specifically, oscillator hard sync. Um, so what is that? So uh, basically, hard sync is when we take um, an oscillator and we reset its phase uh, using something else, probably a different oscillator. And we reset its phase um, back to, you know, in this case, um, because my phase is set to zero, we're going to reset it back to zero. Um, so uh, oscillator hard sync has some roots in um, subtractive synthesis, uh, where the idea is to take a very, you know, har harmonically rich sound, um, like say, for example, a, a saw wave or something, right? Um, and you kind of carve out some of the frequencies using a filter, and you use that to, you know, really shape um, your timbre and what the sound sounds like. Uh, and as we're going to see, um, oscillator hard sync creates a very harmonically rich sound. Um, so let's see here, a couple, couple things here. I'm going to be showing you some stuff over here on the scope, on the data. And there's a blue waveform on there now, and that's actually the oscillator that I'm going to be using to do the syncing with. That's going to be, that's what we'd call the master. So that's actually not the, uh, <clears throat> that's not the waveform we're going to be hearing. I don't have that uh, connected to the speakers at all. Um, the reason I'm showing it on the scope, I've actually got that, um, this is set up on a global chain. Um, so it's just a, a regular old sine oscillator. And I've got a copy of it routed to channel two, and I'm sending that into channel two of the scope. And as you can see, I've got my trigger source set to channel two as well. And the reason I'm doing this, um, because we're gonna be continuously resetting the phase of the oscillator that we're hearing with this master oscillator, um, if we just watch that channel on a scope, you would basically just see a sine wave and it would just jump around um, as its phase was being reset, the scope would uh, you know, reset as well. Um, we need to trigger with the one with the master oscillator, and that will allow us to actually see, you know, um, kind of how it's shaping the waveform. Um, one other quick thing I wanted to cover here, um, if we go back to channel one, uh, just wanted to kind of point this out about the sine oscillator. We'll use this. Um, if you didn't know this, so it's got this feedback control right here. Um, and what this does, this can be used, um, you know, in uh, FM and, and phase modulation synthesis, um, but at its basics, um, it just takes the output of the sine oscillator and it feeds it back into the phase of the sine oscillator. And let's just take a look at what it does. So the green wave waveform has appeared over here now that I unmuted it, and that's actually the waveform that we're listening to, and right now it's just a sine wave. If I take this feedback control and I sweep it up, You notice that the, the, uh, the waveform starts to look a lot more like a sawtooth wave. Uh, it really looks like a ramp down. And if I do some negative feedback, then it still looks like a saw wave. Uh, this time it actually looks like a ramp up. So I just wanted to point that out um, to get things started, that that's a pretty handy feature built right into the sine oscillator unit, that it can morph from, you know, just a basic fundamental tone, a sine wave, into, um, you know, something kind of timbrely rich, um, a saw wave, um, just with the unit itself, so pretty cool. All right, um, so let's talk about sync. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to, let's try to figure out what the sync thing does, right? So I'm just going to, I'm going to fire it manually, and let me turn the sound back up, and you can watch it on the display as well. So not too much, right? It just kind of makes some annoying clicking sounds and you can actually see the phase of the, the sign get reset over on the scope. Um, but what happens when we start to sync this thing at an audio rate? So I'm gonna come into the sub chain and right now this is, you know, probably normally I would just drop a sine wave oscillator in here, but because we're trying to watch it on the scope, like I explained before, um, I've already got that oscillator set up on, an, on the admin channel on a global chain. So I'm just gonna drop that in here. So we'll go to global and pick that master. And now you can see that the, um, the sync is uh, firing at an audio rate. So let's take a listen to what that sounds like and watch it on the scope. I mean, it definitely doesn't look like a sine wave anymore, right? And um, definitely doesn't sound like one, it sounds um, different. 
Um, so the next thing I want to do to notice, if I go back here to this master, um, what I want to do, um, actually, let me unmute this channel, and then I'm going to move this volt per octave control um, on the sine wave oscillator. So, uh... So interesting, right? It seems like the oscillator that we're not hearing is actually the one that's in charge of the pitch right now, um, which I guess, if you think about it, makes sense. We're resetting that waveform every time that master oscillator um, crosses zero. Um, so that's actually controlling the pitch. And I've got that hooked up um, here to A1 to the, I've got a keyboard coming in here. Um, so let me play the keyboard a little bit and we can kind of verify what's happening. Well, so we've got something that sounds not like a sine wave anymore. Um, and, um, you know, I don't know if it sounds that good, but uh, let's keep going, right? <laughs> so um, the next thing I want to do, um, I'm going to take this frequency control right here. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn the sound back on, and I'm going to sweep this frequency control. And I want you to listen to the sound that it makes as I sweep it. And I want you to watch the waveform over on the data. And um, let's just kind of check it out. Interesting, huh? So did you hear all those different timbres in there? Um, and, you know, if you're used to doing like FM or something like that, I think what I'm hearing in there is kind of that same harmonic series that you get when you, uh, you know, kind of go through the, enter, uh, the integer values, um, you know, of uh, the FM ratios. So neat, huh? Um, let's do the same thing. This time I'm going to take a look at it in the frequency domain. So same thing, I'm going to turn the sound back on and just um, kind of watch and listen what happens um, as we sweep the frequency control on the oscillator that we're hearing. Crazy, huh? So there's all kinds of different stuff in there, and I, I'm having thoughts of all the things we could do with this. Um, just all kinds of great, uh, you know, timbres that happen as you sweep that control. So um, the next thing I wanted to do is uh, build kind of a classic kind of tearing lead sound out of this. Um, so I've already got my keyboard hooked up to the pitch control of that master oscillator that I have on the global channel. Let's also go ahead and hook up a gate and an envelope. Um, so I've got my gate coming in, pretty sure it's on G1. And let's put in an ADSR, and I want this to have a really fast attack. And maybe a little bit longer release. That should be good. And then we'll remember to adjust the gain here. And let's just see how that sounds. <clears throat> it sounds a lot better if I unmute that channel. So um, I've got something that sounds a lot um, a lot different than a sine wave, but it doesn't really kind of have that classic hard sync sound yet. So let's see what we can do. So we know that um, we get different sounds when we sweep this frequency control. So let's do that. Um, I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to use the same gate <clears throat> that I'm using for the amplitude envelope. And let's put another ADSR here. This time let's give it an immediate attack. And let's give it a really long delay. Well, maybe not quite that long. Two seconds, that sounds good. I think we can just kind of zero out the, uh, the release and the sustain. So now we should have just like a really long AD envelope. And let's set the gain on this to, <clears throat> I don't know, maybe 600. 
Yeah, starting to sound a lot more like it. That gain may be a little high. Let me back that down. Let's try 300. Cool. Um, <clears throat> so, um, that's a sine wave being modulated. I think, you know, a lot with a lot of the classic uh, kind of Terran uh, hard sync sounds, you would probably use more, you know, probably more commonly hear a saw wave. Um, so we know with this feedback control, we can make this sound, you know, very similar to a, a saw wave. Let's give that a listen. Yeah, that sounds a lot like it. <laughs> Very cool. Um, well, I mean, that wouldn't be complete without some kind of an effect on it, so let's throw a delay on here. And let's maybe try, I don't know, 300 milliseconds. Give it a bit of feedback. Let's see what that sounds like. <laughs> Maybe a little heavy on the feedback there, but you get the idea. Um, so that's oscillator hard sync, and we use that to make uh, kind of a classic, um, you know, lead sound. Um, I think there's some other things that we could do with it though. So uh, maybe we'll have another chat about hard sync in the future. Um, for now, um, hope you enjoyed, and take care. <laughs>